Thank, thank you, Mr. Wilson. I'm just so honored to join my elected colleagues, uh, neighbors, uh, and friends as we celebrate uh, African American Heritage Month. Uh, we know it's important to celebrate uh, and recognize the past, but also the present and the future. And so that's why I'm so excited to introduce the recipient of the Hall of Fame Award for Outstanding Achievement in Education, Dr. Thomas Parham. Dr. Parham is the president of the California State University, Dominguez Hills. Uh, and he is this year's recipient, and rightfully so. And uh, let's also, uh, we're also proud to acknowledge his wife who's with us, uh, Davida, and daughter, Kenya. Let's celebrate. <laughs> Dr. Parham has extensive history of working with students with, from diverse backgrounds, and he has uh, demonstrated an, an unwavering commitment to student and academic excellence. Characterized as a servant leader, he strives to help students from all backgrounds realize their full measure of promise and possibility. Dr. Parham became the 11th president in March of 2018 of Cal State Dominguez Hills, a highly diverse metropolitan university primarily serving the South Central and South Bay areas of Los Angeles County. And indeed, I was there for a semester. Before beginning his role as president, he served as vice chancellor of student affairs and an adjunct faculty member at the University of California at Irvine, uh, where he has been where he had been since 1985. Hey, Doc, you've been a pioneer there too. Yeah. Yeah. Prior to his role as vice chancellor, Dr. Parham served as assistant vice chancellor for counseling and health services, counseling center director and director of the, of the career and life planning center at UCI. Dr. P, as he is affectionately known, uh, is a licensed psychologist with more than 35 years, 35 years uh, as a scholar and a practitioner. Now, without further ado, please help me in welcoming a man who is distinguished and well-deserving of this year's Hall of Fame Award for Outstanding Achievement in Education, yeah, Dr. Thomas Parham. <laughs> Let me say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me say good morning to the rest of you. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. I want to begin my remarks this morning by providing an expression of sincere thanks and gratitude to our mayor, Eric Garcetti. Members of the LA City Council, I want to acknowledge Nuri Martinez, the first Latina to head this body. Congratulations to you. I also want to acknowledge Joe Fusciano, who in fact is a Cal State University Dominguez Hills Toro yeah. in the house. Nice to see you. Yeah. And also beyond the other members of the city council and the author study club, I want to thank you for the recognition you're providing on this ceremonial occasion. I also want to congratulate all of my fellow honorees whose contributions to enhancing the life spaces of others have been noteworthy and consequential. Let me say that again. They have been noteworthy and consequential. If you only know Jeffrey Osborne by the Woo Woo song, but don't know the way in which he has just been a fixture in our community for years and has stirred the soul and the social consciousness of a whole generation or two or three, with the legacy that he has left us, we are just so grateful for him. And Tiffany Haddish, as a rising star on the horizon who has just blown up, but is one of the best examples, hear me well, of the transformative possibilities of the human spirit. All right. All right. Right? It's not all joking, fun, and games 
right. right? With her, understand what she represents. Right. And to Sandra Evers Manley, who not only is pushing through glass ceilings, but breaking them, mm -hmm. but also finds a way to not get up and define her greatness by the position she holds, but rather by the good that she does for others. Mm -hmm. Somebody know what I'm talking about in here this morning. And of course, my new friend, Michael Lawson, and his lovely wife, Maddie, who is with him. Not only former ambassador, but when you needed to be able to do some good work, you got to call on the people who produce the excellence. And he has done nothing but produce excellence in his career. And I celebrate my friend, right? What a wonderful and marvelous human being. Yeah. Ambassador Lawson, wonderful. So let me try to be quick, because I can't begin to express how flattering and humbling it is to be named to the Education Hall of Fame for this city. For in these spaces and places I occupied in my formative years that helped to crystallize my purpose and mission in life, I used to run these streets, mm -hmm. run all around these streets in LA as we grew up with my siblings and I. But let me also thank all of my special guests. You've met my wife, Davida, and my daughter, Kenya, who's with me. And yes, she is a hashtag girl's dad. Let's not be clear. I also want to in, uh, uh, introduce you to my brother, Gerald. Love him dearly. Uh, he is one of four. And also my niece, Tiasha Nicole, who we watched her come into the world. And she has just been a shining example of what excellence produces and now working, in fact, as a prominent attorney. We love you, girl. Also, we have a lot of family, friends, and others who are here. In fact, some high school folk I went to school with some 40 plus years ago who have stopped by City Hall today to do that, who found their way, and my colleagues at California State University, Domingos Hills. I'm grateful. But as I move along, I want to speak the name of Sadie Parham. Sadie Parham, who looks down on my siblings and me from the heavens and the places where the ancestors dwell. She would be so proud of her son and all of her children for a single parent. Raised four children by herself. Yep. Yep. Never earned more than $18,000 a year. Sent all four to college. Three with college degrees. Three with graduate school. Two with PhDs. Nobody on drugs, nobody in jail, nobody in the gang. What is it that women do in our communities that they never get the credit for? Let me speak the name of my mama on behalf of all women in this community. Because she persevered through the adversities in life despite the unjustified suffering, the unmerited pain, the undeserved harm that leaves the residual characterized by the ontological wounds and existential bruises. That was my mama. Let me also remember my late mentor and teacher, Dr. Joseph White, who found in a young man a talent I needed to express, but also made sure that our mission was not to simply achieve position, but actually to pay it forward and to do something for other people. I hope my career has certainly done that as an academician, clinician, and scholar. But know that in honoring me, you honor the California State University system and the campus of Dominguez Hills in particular. We are the largest system of public higher education in all of America. Mm -hmm. And why Dominguez Hills? Why is that so special, Mr. Mayor, council members, guests? We are a campus of 17,027 students. Mm -hmm. We represent a demographic where everybody is out looking for diverse students, and they sit right at your doorstep. 64% mm -hmm. Latino, one of the second or third largest percentages of Latino kids in this entire state, not just the city. We have 14% African-American. That is the largest percentage of black students of any university across this state of California. We have 10.8% Asian-American, 8% Caucasian. We are an international multicultural mecca of talent that we are training for the next generation. And we are so pleased and grateful to be honoring the system. You honor me, right, in doing that particular space. And I am so grateful for that because we are indeed training the workforce of tomorrow. As I stand here, though, amid the political and civic ambiance of City Hall during African American History Month, I cannot help but recall the words of a famous educator, right, who reminds us that if you allow people to control the way you think, 
You don't have to assign them to an inferior status. If necessary, they will seek it for themselves. Break it down. Break it down. That prophetic word of Carter G. Woodson, who was the founder of Negro History Week, that is the precursor to African History Month. Somebody know what I'm talking about today. Reminds us that even as we commemorate African History Month today, the greatest threat to the lives of African descent people, in my opinion, as a humble psychologist, is not drugs, gangs, violence, poverty, racism. I know you'll hear that on the news. For our people, it is the need for mental liberation. That is the greatest threat. And so I've committed myself, and we commit ourselves to unlocking the shackles of conceptual incarceration that keep people blinded to the possibilities and potential in life. And I'm reminded that in educational systems, there ought to be something wrong with a system that leaves people strangers to themselves, aliens to their culture, oblivious to their condition, and inhuman to people who want to oppress them. So my hope for all of us, as we think about African History Month on this February day, is that we would rediscover who you are at the core of your being. We would reconnect with the culture that is often enclosed in a climate of cultural sterility. Right? that too many places in our country represent that you would become less oblivious to our condition as a nation and a people, and that you leave this place, as Dr. King would remind us, with a renewed sense of affirmation about the dignity and divinity of your humanity as members of the human family, because we are all caught, ladies and gentlemen, in a space of mutuality. We are tied to a single garment of destiny. And as we're talking about famous women, Barbara Jordan will close my remarks. Famed attorney and congresswoman was fond of saying, it's a privilege to serve people. A privilege, Mr. Mayor, that must be earned. Absolutely. But once earned, you have an obligation to do something good with it. I hope that, as you know, in recognizing me, you honor the best in all of us here, whose greatness is defined in the shadows of Dr. King and Brother Malcolm, not by the titles we hold or the positions that we acquire or the wealth we possess, but the depth of our love the amount of our giving, and the quality of our service toward members of the human family. That is what we do at California State University, Dominguez Hills, and why I'm so proud to represent that campus as its 11th president. For know that who you honor today, on this February 5th, 2020, is an individual, just a regular old round the way brother who grew up on these streets of LA, who sought to use his educational and psychological gifts to really help people. My goal is always to help people find hope in the midst of despair, find courage in the face of fear, find compassion in the face of insensitivity, find strength in the midst of weakness and vulnerability, excellence in the face of mediocrity, enlightenment and illumination in the face of cultural ignorance, and find an authentic voice in the midst of useless chatter that represents the echoes we see so much on TV news. But you've got to also help people find the resolve to keep on keeping on in the face of adversity and also a commitment to fulfill rather than betray the legacy we have all been blessed to inherit. I remind you, as Franz Fanon did all of us, that each generation out of relative obscurity must reach out and seek to fulfill its legacy or betray it. I hope by honoring me today that you have said that I have helped to fulfill that legacy we represent from our African ancestors and not betray the legacy they left us. Thank you very much. Well, I am sure glad you did not pass a collection plate because nobody in this place would have lunch money today. <laughs>